Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we weren't sure if we were going to do another Shira video or not, but Geeky said she wanted to. I, I, I am. I have some parting words. I am not going to watch the the last season of the show. I didn't watch the season that happened before. I watched like part of an episode, and it was so dumb I couldn't stand it. So um, I'm not watching it, and it went exactly the way I knew it was going to go. So, yeah, we're going to talk about, I guess this is going to be our, our final thoughts on She-Ra. It's over. It's done with. The show is yeah, over. Well, this show, my, my final thoughts on She-Ra in general. I still like the original show, and I probably will talk about it from time to time. Well, I think, to be honest, the original show is going to probably, the classic iteration of She-Ra is going to hold up longer mm -hmm. uh, than this version of She-Ra. Uh, now, disclaimer, I myself only watched the first season. Uh, I decided early on it was definitely not a show for me. But mm -hmm. I was never the intended audience, which is fine. Well, neither are children, like they kept arguing. <laughs> neither are kids. Neither are old school fans. So it's a ten for a very specific audience. Mostly Noel Stevenson and people like her and her friends. Tumblr. Yeah. This show is by Tumblr for Tumblr. You should call it She Me because basically she she, she she me because basically she wrote the show for herself. Which she basically admits to. This is what I'm like. I mean, this is what everything we kind of speculated. They had kind of a, a final wrap up interview with her on Polygon and, and I think NPR. She did the press rounds and it pretty much confirms what we have been saying that this show is basically a multi million dollar fanfic. Yep. Sorry, but it is. And that is it. You're allowed to like the show. Want to preface with that because my god we still get hate on shira videos from two don't years care. ago don't, don't give care. a shit go watch another channel um, <laughs> yeah but you know what if, if this had been a different show yes uh we would give it a pass we'd be like yeah. you know okay if this had been like no it's even universe we watch it we don't care you know all other stuff we wouldn't have been like so upset but this is not another show this was called shira and when you go in with an ip that's already established like it or not Whine about it all over the effing internet or not. You got a fan base that comes with it. Yes. And you're allowed to update things and that's okay. But this wasn't an update. This was a, you completely changed pretty much everything and just slapped she or names on it. It's pretty much what it was. And in the article and then when she talked about, she just basically just made it about herself. Didn't even watch the show. Uh, wanted to make something for her. And about me, it's all about me, me, me. You take me out of vocabulary and she doesn't have much to talk about. Yeah, that's what got me about this was, you know, again, when you're entrusted with an IP that comes with, you know, comes with an existing mm -hmm. fandom, look, you don't have to be completely beholden to everything that came before, but you need to be cognizant of the, I think the fans and the responsibility of, um, you know, giving people somewhat something what they expected. And she talks about, uh, you know, it's a riff from Ryan Johnson where she basically says, you know, I wanted to subvert I didn't all expectations. Care. Basically, I didn't give a shit about the original show. I just wanted to use the name. I wanted to see myself. In and it. make it about myself. Yeah. That's exactly what she says. Um, big surprise there. Could have called that from, you know, before it even started with the way the PR was done. I mean, still, that being said, it's not as bad as Thundercats Roar. But um, uh, no, no. And that's that's the thing. Like, again, if the show had been called something else, mm -hmm. if it had been an original creation called like Super Sword Princess Power Hour or some bullshit, that no, would be, be called Noelle Stevenson's Super Sword Princess and all the characters be based on her by Noelle Stevenson. Uh -huh. um, Voiced by Noelle Stevenson. Well, yeah, well, yeah, we'll talk about that, too. But yeah, I mean, this is kind of a, a textbook of, I, I think, how not to deal with fans, too. Now, this show was greenlit. At a different time. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2020, I don't think that Mattel would have done this mm -mm. because Mattel wants to make money. Right. Um, this version of She-Ra did not sell toys. I'm and sorry. You can whine about it all you want. Toys sat in clearance. Three bucks. Yeah. You know, $3 They, they did Target. not make a lot of them. They did no. not sell that well. I am sorry if you don't like it, but that's just the way it is. Yeah. So, um, and at the end of the day, that is Mattel's goal as they kept using that to throw shade at the original show. You know, we had people working on this show, you know, constantly reminding everybody in the, the trusted media, using air quotes here, that the original She-Ra and He-Man shows were just toy commercials. Mm -hmm. uh, Which wasn't true. It actually, I mean, especially for She-Ra, it wasn't. Yeah, well, He-Man wasn't either, right? because the way it actually worked was, you know, Mattel had the basic ideas for the toys, but Filmation actually created the mythos. Right. And they cared about these characters. Right. And we're talking about Filmation, a studio that was known for being inclusive, a studio that was known for having, you know, a lot of LGBTQ people working there. Um, I get tired of the whole, well, you're just mad because she doesn't look like a model and you can't fap to her. And it's like, do you understand that the reason they got the design pushed through and it was so hard was because she didn't look like a model? 
because she was thick and she wasn't super pretty and that was kind of a, a win back then and now you're kind of slamming on it no they don't because that would require actually knowing what the hell you're talking about and being and remembering the past and she wasn't 16 in the original show god she was like, i hear that one more time well no -uh, she's 16 in the original show no she wasn't I think I think they they were about 21 and somebody's got it I'm sure somewhere but yeah I mean look they here's the problem you know they, they took the show they took an existing IP comes with an existing fan base right. decided we don't want those fans so let's just make make the show we want to see using these names but it's going to have very very little to do with the original show which in some cases you can get away with if the original show was so abysmal or not well known yeah, you can get away with it, but the thing is, is that She-Ra and He-Man are uh, icons of the 80s. Right. They have large fan bases, and those fan bases do have certain expectations, you know, that they want to be met. And if you subvert them, well, look at what happened with Star Wars. You know, mm -hmm. it's uh, it doesn't go well. And this is this is kind of the problem. We're going to pull up some of these articles here, and we're going to talk about some of the stuff that uh, Noel Stevenson says, which basically to me looks like this was you know we've talked about this, this is basically about her it's all about her oh i knew it was gonna be about her i used to follow her on twitter it was always about her she would go around and deliberately troll people troll, go after men and call herself ginger hazing to go after men and then you know because she was going to show them she also would take credit for things she didn't do i mean we see this with they keep kind of crediting her for lumberjanes she was part of a team on lumberjanes she did not do lumberjanes single-handedly like they keep saying yeah, the, we'll talk about that. But basically, she said that you know the problem with Star Wars and Lord of the Rings is she didn't see herself reflected uh, in it. There are a lot of people who don't see them reflected in that. I don't see people in wheelchairs. They're not reflected in that. Um, I never really saw a character in Lord of the Rings or Star Wars. I mean, Mar Jade later on in, in the books, but I didn't really see a character that was me. And, and you know, and that was fine. I still liked the show, even though that wasn't reflected. But she didn't even watch the show to begin with. So what the hell is she talking about? Yeah, one of the interviews, she talks about how she didn't grow up with the show. She was aware she of it. She played with the toys. She played with the toys. And made up her own stories, clearly. Yeah, so, I mean, you read the article on NPR. She talks about how much she loved Sailor Moon. You can see that in She-Ra. Again, yeah, it, all, it does. Our daughter was like, that looks like Sailor Moon, not She-Ra. All of these things that are not She-Ra, they're putting into She-Ra, but where's the She-Ra? You've got your, your self-insert. Uh, you've got your LGBTQ themes. You've got, um, you know, elements of Sailor Moon and other anime and kind of goofy, younger Cartoon it's stereotypes, shows. some of the, some stereotype characters. Stereotypes, Eskimo girl. Um, yeah, of course the flower child the perfume is really skinny and you know. She's basically Phoebe from Friends. Kind of, yeah. You know, uh, but but you've got all these things that aren't Shira being put into Shira because Noelle Stevenson wanted a show about herself. About herself. And because she never really watched the original, and a lot of people had outright disdain. You know, for the original show, we saw, you know, Marcus Scribner, which I was, I mean, I was just face palmed during uh, one of the comic book conventions. It was on a sci fi wire or something where he was making fun of the original voice actors, talking about how bad the voice acting was. Yeah, and the thing is, you know, you know, this isn't something that they would probably get on their own. It's probably because that was what they were told and when they had the discussions. Yeah. She goes on in another article about her totally all female, completely diverse, all powerful female writers room. It's all women. All women is not diversity. You can't scream about diversity when you have all women writing. And Chuck Austin, who was brought in to fix the show. Right, but you never heard that mentioned. No, you don't. <laughs> you never heard that mentioned. Um, it wasn't just her, but it's all her. She invented it, you know, and that's what I have a problem with. The way they treated fans, the way they treated the original, and the people involved with the original is what I have the biggest problem with. Her taking credit for everything and making it all about herself, I knew was going to happen. That's why when I saw who was running She-Ra, my first words were, yay, She-Ra. Aw, oh, shit. Because I knew this is what was going to happen. I've been around, I've seen this chick around for years. I knew what, how she operated. I knew we were in for exactly what we got. Like, yeah. Exactly about how, the way we got it, too. Yeah, and look, I mean, you want to make a show like that, that's that's fine. You do, you do something new. So Stevenson gathered an all-female writing staff to update this team of powerful update. women. Update. You didn't update it. You just completely upended it. Uh, in the original show, the princesses are white, skinny, and presumably straight. You know, but yeah, here's, what, you know, here's the kick, kick, kicker, too. They weren't all white, but beyond that, presumably straight. Um, actually, no, because back then, you didn't sexualize everything. It's a kid's show. You didn't have to know who was with who, who was dating who, who was kissing who, who was going to prom with who, whom. It, it's a, it was a kid's show. My mom, I told her this, and she goes, but they didn't sexualize the characters then. The new rebellion includes women of color. Uh, there were women of color in the original. 
Oh my god. Did they watch? Even... They didn't watch. I don't even think they watched the original show. So yeah, and again, you know, this is this is what got me about this because they were throwing sh- so much shade at Filmation. Filmation was a very progressive studio. Mm-hmm. Lou Scheimer was very progressive. His daughter Erica was was it is still very progressive. There were a lot of people who put so much into that original show. And early on when they premiered the show, they, they just threw all kinds of shade at them. Mm-hmm. Um, said that the original Shiro was created to, to for men to oogle. Not true on you know, any level. I love I love how, you know, the original Shiro shouldn't be sexualized because it's for men and they're, they're sexualizing her. And you shouldn't do that. So we're going to make a younger version of Shira and then put all kinds of uh, Shira and Katra saw, sometimes porn pictures up on the internet. It's okay as long as they're the ones that are sexualizing it. If it's a woman sexualizing, it's okay. But if it's a guy, oh no, you can't do that. I'm sorry. Potter kettle. I'm so sick of the shit. I'm just sick to death of it. You cannot yell at people for one thing and then do it yourself and think it's okay because it's you. Well, of course, you know, the Mary Sue, Princess Weeks from the Mary oh, Sue God, support this is a, this is a chick This is the biggest circle jerk article. She is a person that thinks it's completely okay to race, or to race bend redheads, but it's not okay to make Buffy black. Yeah, so this is, okay, this is my takeaway from this whole thing is this was a show that was probably greenlit in like 2015, 2016, uh, because that's the way things were going. By like, certain people who had themselves had the same agendas. Right, so let's go to Tumblr, find somebody from Tumblr, uh, you know, take an existing IP, slap that person on this show, and, uh, you know, bada bing, bada boom. It's 2020, it's very appropriate that this show is ending in 2020 because this show would not have been greenlit. No. Year because Mattel would have been like, we got to sell toys. And then they keep making it out like, you know, oh, it's because, you know, LGBTQ. I don't really care. No, the representation show. I didn't care if they made characters LGBTQ in the show. No. What I cared about was the fact that they changed characters fundamentally. They changed them just, you know, for stupid reasons. They they fucking made uh, uh, Frost, uh, you know, because they stereotyped the hell out of her and all this other shit. These stupid, cha- these stupid changes for no reason other than to glorify themselves. And then they treated uh, uh, old time fans Fans, like trash even before the show started because they knew they knew those fans were gonna like it because they knew they were changing everything about it just keeping the names and trying to glorify Noel Stevenson I'm sorry but that's what this was uh, it, you know and I'm gonna say this and I really don't give a flying shit if people get pissed about it because this is the way it is they're like going on about how it's with it's allowed queerness for kids to be normalized in general why I mean, I'm not saying that you that it's okay. I have no problem with LGBTQ representation. What I have a problem with is why do you keep wanting to, to put kids in a situation? When we were kids, there were these shows. People weren't sexualized all the time. It was like they were characters, okay. You didn't know who they were dating. You didn't know who they were sleeping with. Didn't matter because it was for kids. And kids, you know, have enough shit in their lives. They didn't need to worry about that. If they wanted to make them, like, you know, gay in their heads, they could. If they wanted to make them straight in their heads, they could. They were not sexualized characters. Why do you keep wanting to shove sexualization down children's throats and then tell everybody, well, it's for the children? It's not for the children. It's for you and your friends. Bottom line, stop lying. Because that's who it was for. And thank God it's effing over. Nobody knew who He-Man was fucking. I'm just no one say, cared. Nobody cared. I wanted to see He-Man beat up Skeletor. That's why I watched He-Man. Uh, I did not care. I didn't even. It never crossed my mind that He-Man could have a crush on Man at Arms or Tila or both. Yeah. I don't care. He-Man beats up Skeletor. That's the plot. Shira beats up Hordak. This whole thing seems more like people who just want to use th- the these shows as revenge. Pretty much, yeah, you know, look, and I'm not going to pretend to know what folks are going through, right? But a kid show is really, again, again, a kid show based on existing IP is probably not the right place uh, to to basically have a couch session, you know, psychotherapy, uh-huh. which is what a lot of these cartoons, like you watch, what's the difference between cartoons of like 20 and 30 years ago and i see this in cartoon network shows too where it almost feels like the adult creators are trying to work through a lot of their childhood yeah. issues using multi-million dollar studio budgets mm-hmm. when at the end of the day they really need to focus on just making an entertaining show mm-hmm. uh, for a mass audience for a right. general audience and uh, in mattel's case selling the shit out of toys too so you know and i'm not saying you can't make shows like that but you know using an existing ip 
uh, as your your therapy session is right. not good. And, they, and their go-to always is, you just don't like LGBTQ that's people. Not and that's true. not true. And that's not my point. And there's a lot of people who agree with me who are LGBTQ. I'm tired of you using everybody as a shield because it's not true. Because the heart of it is not even about them. It's about Noel Stevenson and, and that she didn't get what she needed when she was a kid. So she wants to make sure she gets what she needs now for the children. That's what it sounds like because you actually read the interview and Scott, you actually feel kind of bad for her because you read. The- I would, except I've seen the shit she's done on Twitter and I don't feel, I think she gets what she deserves. <laughs> but I'm like reading, she's like, you know, she's like, well, I had a crush on Velma Dinkley. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, and what does that have to do with, with Shira? Well, now I got Because Velma didn't like her back? Yeah, I don't know. Velma doesn't like anybody back, uh, honey. She's a cartoon. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to put that out there. But like, of course they went the way everybody knew they were going to go. Um, they're like, of course they got their ship. The ship was set up from day one. It was, it was so obvious. It was going to go that way. Who cares? I'm just glad it's effing over. So I guess my, um, I love this. They put the spoiler thing, uh, Denny Geek, they put the spoiler thing underneath the spoiler. Like, here's the spoiler. Look, they get together. Oh, oh warning. There's some spoilers uh, here. But I think that's that's the takeaway. Like, God, and we've seen this. It's almost a trope now where you have creators who did not uh, respect or grow up with an IP be given the reins to it, like Ryan Johnson. Uh-huh. Um, and then they, they kind of do with it whatever the hell they want to do. And then they, they, they attack the fans who have a problem problem with it because they fundamentally don't understand. In this case, it was literally Shira and name only. We took the original Shira, uh, we took Noel Stevenson's show, and we just slapped that that coat of paint on it. Mm-hmm. And if you complain about it, you're an awful person who hates gay people. Yeah, and that's not the truth. The truth is, you know, it's a shitty show. I'm sorry. It, I, mean, well, it, God, I, I will give them that the writing did tighten up. That could have been because they brought Chuck Austin uh, in uh, because the first few episodes were all over the damn place. And it did get tighter with the second season. Um, but in the third season, it was I just gave up after that because we get a fourth season when they were talking about her mom. Glimmer's mom's missing. And they're talking about what kind of cake she wants for her coronation party. I'm like, what the flip? You lost me at horsey and slumber party. Yeah. Uh, but again, I get this show's not for me, right? But there are a lot of uh, fans of Masters of the Universe, old school fans who, and I understand you're making this show for kids, but it's not really. They're not for making kids. it for kids. It's it, a lot. It's for, and that's the thing. Stop too. using kids as a shield. And that that gets me too. Like I understand shows that they they kind of exist on different levels. Like you have a show like Animaniacs that adults and kids can enjoy it. Uh, there are a lot of shows on Cartoon Network that have adult and kid fans. But more and more, we're seeing shows that are basically like Adult Swim shows. Uh, using existing IP or they're mean spirited like Thundercast War which is basically a big middle finger to 80s cartoon fans mm-hmm. and this is in the same vein it's not as mean no it's not as bad as Thundercats were I'll give them that I, I will 100% say that right. they're not anywhere near and, as bad as that and they're actually trying to make a good show it's just not Shira, and do not attack the fans of the original show you know mm-hmm. that's uh, and it's over it's over and i think whatever thank mattel, god it's over whatever mattel does from here on out with he-man and shira hopefully is different i don't know if i really have a vote of confidence in what we've heard about uh, kevin smith's version yeah he got awfully awfully defensive got for somebody awfully who, defensive yeah. uh we heard some rumors again can't verify i do know the source though and i know the source does have connections to and the i know the source industry. got it from some place very 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 likely close to be true to Kevin Smith, um, but the rumor was that the new He-Man show was going to focus more on Tila, and uh, Tila was going to have the power, and basically He-Man's going to sunset himself because he's problematic. People are having problems with Scooby-Doo, the new Scooby-Doo movie. Mm-hmm. It's the same kind of thing, where they took Fred and turned him into an asshole, mm-hmm. and then uh, Daphne has to step up. Right, because you can't just, people can't exist, men can't exist unless they're either stupid or assholes. We saw this with uh, Ghostbusters 2016. Yeah. Every male character in that movie, go look is either a moron or they're an asshat. Or I both. Mean, yes. And you are, you know, it's like you cannot be a good person and be male. And it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, I'm not going to, I have a son and a daughter and I'm not going to tell my daughter that she's better than my son because she's a girl. And nor am I going to tell her she's less than my son because he's a boy. That's stupid. I, back when we were kids, they didn't do that. It was like, you know, boys and girls like the same shows. They're yeah. made for boys and girls. They weren't like, you know, having to belittle one character to make other characters lift it up. It, it's, it's just stupid. It's like a, a very recent thing. And I blame it on the age ranges of the people that have been working on this shit. 
Yeah. I blame it on the, the very narcissistic mentality of a certain generation anymore. Not blaming everyone in that generation. No, because no, not at all. I know people who aren't like that. Yeah. But it seems like the ones that get themselves into Hollywood are usually that way. And I think a lot of times they take a shortcut to Hollywood. Look, and I'm not throwing shade at anyone in particular, but there are people who basically get too much too soon. Mm -hmm. You know, right out of school, they're they're given, you know, duties of running or directing or writing or whatever. They don't have to struggle. Like you used to hear about uh, artists struggling for years to get that first big break. And a lot of these people like immediately they're handed the keys to an existing IP. And we see it again and again and again. And 95% of the time, it ends in tears because the, the person's like constantly out there on Twitter. Yo, know, well, look at you know for Dana Schwartz. Look at her. She got handed She Hulk yeah. with virtually no experience. And now a lot of these have, people haven't got experience lately. Have you noticed that? Yeah. I mean, flat out. Noelle Stevenson did her own you know comic and worked as a writer on some things, but she wasn't set up. She wasn't ready to be a showrunner. That's why she they was brought in what Chuck kind Austin. of person? <laughs> they brought in Chuck Austin to fix it. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, but that he was in there too. And then you never hear them mention him. Yeah, they don't. They, they bury Chuck Austin. Um, so, you know, I mean, that's the thing. A lot of these careers are hand too much too soon. I don't think this trend is going to last. I think especially with the coronavirus, mm -hmm. studios are going to have to be much more careful what they green light. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be able to take chances, um, you know, on things, especially if it's an existing IP, like they're going to have to make damn sure if this is an existing IP, we stay true to what made it popular in the first place. The reason Noel Stevenson was given She-Ra 30 years after She-Ra was on the air is because it was popular enough. It had enough brand recognition and fan goodwill for her to be given this job. Right. And then, and then you have articles like this. She-Ra creator, Noel Stevenson, she didn't create She-Ra. She created She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. It's not, I mean, it's not even the same thing. She did not create She-Ra. She appropriated She-Ra. <laughs> She-Ra appropriator, Noelle Stevenson. Surprisingly, if you watch, there's a He-Man a documentary on uh, He-Man She-Ra on Netflix. If you watch that, She-Ra was actually created by women uh, who had to fight very hard to make her thicker. Mm -hmm. you know, the toys and, and stuff, yeah. Right, and and they had to fight very hard to get She-Ra made. So that also flies in the face of, um, and this is one thing that really irritates me. People are like, oh, there's not, there's no women working in animation. Go back to most of those 80s shows, including those boy action shows, and Margaret Lesh was, she was a producer on so many of those shows. Mm -hmm. G.I. Joe, Transformers, uh, I think Ninja Turtles maybe, but Power Rangers for sure, X-Men, mm -hmm. you know, and... Uh, you know, Erica Scheimer at Filmation, who was a showrunner for He-Man. Oh, there's a bunch of them. You know, so all that toxic masculinity came from women. Yeah. But, you know, but they want to undo all that to re elevate themselves. When you have to lower somebody else's accomplishments to artificially inflate your own, you accomplish nothing and you're kind of an a-hole. But anyway. Anyway, so, um... Yo, know, I don't know where you want to go with this. I guess my, my I don't have anything else to say. I think I said everything I wanted to uh, say. But this says that you know. Oh, this is subversion. Yeah, yeah, this is subverting that chosen one destiny is about subverting what the expectations are for you. The destiny seems inevitable. Basically, let's subvert the audience's expectations. Uh, you know, and it it played out about as well as you expect. Now, Shira, the new Shira does have its own audience mm -hmm. it's got well, the audience yeah exactly you know i think it's a relatively small audience no stevenson made a show about herself for her people her friends and people like her pretty much pretty Tumblr much people she got paid well that's it and at the end of the day this was a multi-million dollar fanfic we saw a lot of this in hollywood for about four or five years i think it's going to end um i'm not saying she can't go on to do something original that's you know no, i would have rather seen her do something original yeah i mean that's that you know but you know, I would let, much rather seen her do her own show, which basically this was her show shoved into She-Ra clothes. I would have rather just seen her own show instead of, you know, her, you know, putting the She-Ra name on it. Yeah, because again, you look at shows like Steven Universe, like I don't have problems with Steve. I don't have any problems with Steven Universe. It is what it is. Uh, it's an original show. Mm -hmm. you original, know? yes. It, it's original. I mean, I really can't say, I mean, I, I can't say anything. The, the shows that we complain about 99.9% .9 of the time are the ones that are existing IP. And it's usually the creator's pissing on the fans of the original that that irritates us more than yeah anything. we mostly stand up for fans yeah and uh we we saw it with shira at the very beginning their marketing was basically piss on the fans mm -hmm. 
Okay, and a lot of these blogs that pissed on the fans are laying people off. Vice just laid off like 155 people because people don't want this bullshit, this mm -mm. clickbait bullshit anymore. Um, we saw it with Thundercats Roar. The whole purpose of that was basically give the middle finger to 80s action cartoons. I think the guy has some issues. Uh, Victor Courtright has some issues with his brother or something. I don't know. I don't know. But again, it's really bad compared to She-Ra. It's really egregious compared to She-Ra. Yeah, that's a totally that's a totally different league of holy shit. You know, these cartoons should not be your therapy sessions. Millions and millions of dollars so you can work through your issues. Right. You know? It's ridiculous. <laughs> and I'm I'm glad it's over. Uh, if you like it, that's fine. You're yeah, allowed fine. to like it. Um, but I'm going to tell you, I'm allowed to not like it because I get so tired of people who supposedly doesn't, don't care what I think having field days going on and on and on about what a bad person I am because I don't agree with them on a stupid television show. We still get comments and, and DMs about people who are pissed off that we don't like the new Shira, and I don't know what to tell. Watch another channel, yeah. Because we're not gonna change. And you know what? You call, you writing nasty comments or calling us on Twitter isn't gonna give us a very favorable opinion of no, the show. No, not changing our mind in any way, shape, or no, form. No, because now we're like, oh, and the fans are nuts too. So okay, yeah. <laughs> so you know like, what? Whatever. Don't care. Don't it's care. over. It's Thank over. God. It's not over. watching any more of it. I will talk about Shira, but I'll talk about the real Shira, not this stuff. And you know, we'll go on from there. And but I mean, I'm just really tired of uh, these people appropriating things that that already existed, uh, ruining them, smearing them, making them, you know, trying to put them in their image and then, you know, telling everybody else that they're bad people for not agreeing because it, to them it's a personal insult because you don't like me if you don't like my show because I am the show. Yeah, and that's the problem. I think I think everybody's opinions of their, their own self-worth have become so entangled with, you know, the stuff that they make or their social media or whatever that you're not allowed to be critical uh, anymore. You're not allowed to be critical. So anybody that's even remotely critical and back in the day like there were critics that was scathing mm -hmm. scathing criticism now if you're even the least bit uh critical you're a nasty nasty person you're a misogynist racist troll usually an incel an alt-right yahtzee um tra you're you're transphobic phobic uh you know whatever phobe some ist or phobe um you know, and, and, and what's funny to me is a lot of people they're calling these names to are people that, that they that are the people that they're supposed to be representing. Right. Now, that's so, so funny because we get people. I mean, geez, I remember uh, just some guy. I think Mark Wade was implying that he was a he was a white supremacist and he's a black guy. Yeah. Uh, so, OK. Uh, yeah, and it is. It's, it's become a cartoon. Yeah, this this uh, a lot of these showrunners they can't handle the criticism, and uh, they crack. You know, and it's not that people are trying to make them crack. It's like they legit can't handle backlash, but they always preemptively try to come up with reasons why. Well, you can't. This my work is bulletproof because you know it gives you know, me too. There was a time when people would listen to criticism, and if there was validity to the criticism. They would make changes and adapt. To, you know, you you pick out the you know what was you you definitely could see like okay yeah that that that's true. I might be I'll maybe I'll work harder to fix that. But when they came to the, these people. Uh, you, you can't you can't criticize anything about it because if you criticize yeah. anything about it because they're using identity politics or children or whatever as a shield um, instead of you know actually trying harder and if you criticize anything even if you have a, you have a really good argument for why you're mad about it and have might have absolutely nothing to do with you know being LGBTQ or otherwise or being you know a male or female or whatever it doesn't have anything to do with that they'll find a way to make you an ist or a phobe because they cannot they won't even try to find what you're saying to see oh can I do better because they don't want to hear it they in their mind when they're especially when they're making characters about themselves that if you're criticizing that character you're criticizing that yeah and there's got to be some separation here you know I mean at the end of the day that this I think this is going to be a curious relic to look back on in like 10 or 20 years because people are going to be like, oh, yeah, that was during that time period where like all these showrunners were taking an existing IP and and uh, uh, turning into something different just to make a statement. And it was all weird and tumblery and whatever. And thank God that only lasted uh, five or six years. Yeah. And I think it is over. I mean, Steven Universe is over again. At least Steven Universe was original. original, though. Yeah. You know, I can't it, fault Steven Universe. I won't, it was original. It was original and it wasn't about shows. It, it was original. And I think if, if she had done a show that was like this show, but without the Shira name, uh, it, it would have been fine. Yeah, yeah. I, I think agree when with you that. and when you I the problem is when you put an IP that exists and you use that name, you want to leverage the name, leverage the audience that have kept it going for years. You cannot just change everything about it, um, slap a coat of paint on it, and then totally offend every single fan who doesn't agree with you.
Yeah. You can't you can't have it both ways. You either make something new or you make something that, you know, it tries to meet in the middle with the fans. There was no meeting in the middle. Before the show even came out, they were trashing fans. Preemptively, they were telling fans uh, that they were awful, that that they were uh, spanking it to Shira. I'm like, nobody was, well, maybe some people were, but I don't. It would have been okay if it was me that was spanking this year, because it's okay if, you know, now, you know... No, uh, she's, she admitted she had a crush on Vilma freaking Dinkley. I'm just saying, because... I mean, like, come on! You know? I'm just saying, it's, it's ridiculous. The double standard here is just off the charts. You can't even make this crap up. It's yeah, insane. I just... And again, you know, she hasn't been the one that's been throwing a lot of shade, but the marketing people behind the show are awful, awful people. Uh, they really are. And I'm sorry, the attitude was, this is our Shira now, and if you don't like it, you can suck a peach. Well, then they're going about diversity, but they make an all-female writer's room. That's not what diversity means. That's all I need to know about you. When that's your definition of diversity is everybody like me, I don't see how that's any different. All, if you, all white, a room full of all white women. Well, I don't think they were all white, but my point <laughs> is, you know, when, you, when your definition of diversity is a bunch of women who are like you, that's not diversity. That's not how diversity works. And back in the day, Filmation had actual diversity. Yeah, Filmation, I mean, they used to joke Filmation. That, I think that's what, what for me is like the most disgusting thing is Filmation was known as being a very progressive animation studio. It was called the gayest place in town. And then to say that, well, there wasn't enough gay in She-Ra and He-Man when it was, the showrunner was gay. You know, yeah. it's so stupid. I know, I mean, it's ridiculous. And and that's what makes me mad. It's like, I'm sorry, but a, a room full of, your, of yourself is not diversity. Yeah. That's not how diversity works. Me and all my closest friends that are just like me. Exactly. That's not how diversity works. So anyway, She-Ra's over. Uh, I, am, I am still nervous about He-Man, but at least I know the animation will be good because the studio's uh, actually very good. Yeah, it'll look nice. It'll look nice. You know it that might, much. It might be a well-polished turd, but it will look nice. It'll look nice. It'll uh, be shiny. So we'll see. But uh, there we go. Show's over, guys. Yeah, I'm out on, on this one. I don't yep. care anymore. Yep, I've been checked out since season one, but you wanted to make the videos. So. I do. I wanted to be like, okay, wrapping it up. And I, I, I guess it's because these headlines just really pissed me off. We're going to wrap it up. Yep. We're done. We're out of here. Mm -hmm. Good night, Shira. Goodbye. Yep. Good well, uh, good Hello back to the original one because yeah, I, I, I I do love the original Shira. Yeah, you have your classic figure. I do have my classic with the brushable hair, and I have a bunch of the actual classic figures. So and, and look what Mattel's doing. Just side note, look what they're doing. They're bringing back classic He-Man, classic Shira. Yep. Because they know where the money is. All right, guys, we'll talk later. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.